Santana tipped it in. Well, he was there. Robert Sacre also will get credit for the tip. He is another 6'11 player for Gonzaga. The Zags back on top, 11 to 10. 12 18 to play first half from Indianapolis. Indiana wants a slower paced game. They know Gonzaga scores 80 points a game, and they're not going to win a game in the 80s. So Indiana's taking their time on offense. So far, hanging in the ballgame. The key here, don't turn it over. Dumas won't get it to go. Sacre, the seven footer out of British Columbia with a rebound. Gray's a good shooter. Little strong again. Good block out that time by Nick Williams. Now Williams kind of went after that when those three point shots oftentimes go farther out. And Schutz drew the foul on Gray. Bodies crashing all over the place. This has been a physical game as Gray picks up his first. So we've got a timeout from downtown Indianapolis. Schutz will be at the line when we come back. Hoosiers hanging in there. Unbeaten Gonzaga with its hands full. Indiana down a point, 11 to 10. And you make the call here, John. What do you think? Well, there's the foul, and the shot goes up. Look at Sacre. He's got his hand in the net, and that par uh, parasails the ball up over the uh, backboard. And you see the Indiana players pointing at the rim, saying that should be goaltending. Look at Tom Crean. He's asking for goaltending, but that call was not made. It could have been that the foul came before the shot. Although he's getting two he's shots getting at two the line, shots, yeah. so it wouldn't have been that. Uh, I'm not sure why that wouldn't have been called goaltending. Uh, it must have been the non-continuation rule. Wow. Because that ball was definitely on the rim when it was uh, touched by a Gonzaga player. The net was touched by a Gonzaga player. This is Kip Schutz at the line, and he's the sophomore off the baseball team where he hit 317 and had six home runs last spring for the Indiana Hoosier baseball team. And they had a, a shooting contest, a three-point shooting contest, and Schutz shot the ball so well, Indiana invited him to come on up for the basketball team. And baseball program has no problem with that, and he makes two big free throws, and Indiana's back on top, 12 to 11. Now Gonzaga shooting just 4 of 14 from the field, 0 for 6 from behind the arc, so just a poor shooting day has hurt Gonzaga here early. Indiana. Austin. They can't get it to go. Strong rebound by Joe. One thing about the Hoosiers, they may not have the same talent level right now as teams like Gonzaga, but they'll play as hard as anybody in the country, and they've done that here again today. Absolutely. That keeps them in the game uh, early right here. Kept them against Wake Forest. I'll tell you, sixth man Tom Crean is off the bench. He's on the sidelines, up and down, encouraging his team. He's a great support for those five players out there. Well, and Tom Crean was saying yesterday, we have zero tolerance for losing habits. Daniel Moore with a shot clock at three. Better hurry. This is Dumas. Desperation time. Shot clock violation. Glad you could join us today for the first ever college basketball game at Lucas Oil Stadium, the home of the Indianapolis Colts. With John Laskowski, I'm Tom Hamilton. Fifth ranked and unbeaten Gonzaga with a basketball. But Indiana with a 12 to 11 lead with 10.45 to play first half. Are you surprised, John? I am surprised. Uh, Gonzaga not shooting well. Indiana lots of turnover. They've got seven. Uh, but the only stats that matter is that scoreboard right now. Indiana has the one point lead. The one thing, too, about this Indiana team is Kyle Tabor is back in with nine freshmen. You've got that youthful enthusiasm where they still believe they can beat anybody on any given night. So they, they don't have any kind of a losing mentality whatsoever. Well, you know, so a lot of it's uh, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> These kids are learning day by day. There are a lot of things they don't know, and they don't get to play the number five team in the country very often. So they're just out there doing what they can. Matt Bolden puts the Zags back up 13 to 12 with 10 15 left here in the first half. You can see Gonzaga's smart team. The outside shot not going. I'm sure Mark Few talked about moving that ball around. Let's get it inside. We're going to make layups. And let's do that. Another Indiana turnover moving the feet, a traveling call. 
Just to pass, Tabor gets it. Dumas has it, thought about the shot, tries to split the defense, but shuffle those feet before the ball hit the ground. Eight Indiana turnovers, yet they trail by just one point halfway through this first half from downtown Indianapolis. We saw Indiana start man-to-man -man against Wake Forest. They went to zone about halfway through that first quarter to force more outside shots. It's been man-to-man -man all the way for Indiana so far. This is the freshman, Dimitri Goodson, who had the ball. Heitfeld off the glass. Boy, that's a lost start, isn't it? That's a tough shot because he was very low on the baseline and had little room for air, plus a T. John Job at seven foot to shoot over, and that shows you the talent Heitfeld has. Biggest Gonzaga lead at 15 to 12. Long three by Roth. And Bolden yanks it out of there for the Zags. Now that's why Ross in the game. And Heitfeld couldn't handle that high pass from Bolden. Third Zags turnover. Let's watch Heifel. He's very low toward the baseline. Watch this. He's got his post hand up. And this is the move we saw. I go baseline. He just turns and shoots. Not much angle there. And you have to hit exactly right to get that to fall straight through. Indiana down by three. Again, Coach Tom Crean saying yesterday, one of the keys is that this is a club that can't lose momentum for any kind of a, a stretch of time because that's all of a sudden where you can lose the game. Dumas for three. Good rebound, Tabor. He'll kick it back out. New shot clock to get a chance to run. Both teams having trouble from behind the arc. That sight line we talked about, Tom, may be impacting yeah. both, uh, the, all these kids from both teams because nobody's making their three-point shots. And you don't get used to that in one or two practices here, do you? Yeah, in the practice yesterday with no fans. And uh, yeah. there's a backdrop of red uh, mostly throughout this stadium. This is Story had it blocked by Day. Shot clock at 10. Indiana has to hurry its offense. More on the drive. More in traffic. Pritchard from the baseline, short. He kept it alive, but yanked out of there by Goodson. Both Pritchard and Story back on the floor with two fouls each. Pritchard with a block. Here comes Story the other way against Dave. Missed the layup, Pritchard rebounds and is fouled. Boy, how about that for some hustle by Tom Pritchard. He's at the uh, defensive end, comes off his man, waits till the shot leaves the player's hand, and then hustles down the other end. And there you see him trailing the play, goes up for the rebound against two of the smaller Gonzaga players and picks up the foul. That's some all-college hustle right there. The freshman out of St. Edwards got to the state finals in Ohio last year and lost. Of course, that St. Edwards team had a superstar on it in Delvon Rowe, who's now at Michigan State, but was hurt all of last year having had knee surgery. Yet Tom Pritchard took that team on his back to the state title game in Ohio. Well, he's just got the same thing to do here with yep. this Indiana team. He's the biggest player inside, uh, leading scorer, and he's got to rally his teammates and do what they can. And he can't pick up that third foul, can he? Absolutely. He's got to be very careful here. Inside, that'll be a foul on Tabor and a bucket for Austin Day. And Gonzaga's up 17 to 13, and they can explode in a hurry. Watch uh, Tabor. He gets passed up by Day right there. Didn't get down the court quickly enough. Day sees that and goes right by Tabor and then gets the layup. Good play there by Austin Day, of course, his father, Darren Day, played for UCLA back in the early 80s, so he's got a great uh, uh, chance to learn basketball uh, right there from his dad. He is listed at 6'11", 180, and he's a good outside shooter. 17 to 13, Gonzaga has its biggest lead. Indiana has missed its last eight shots from the floor. Which they can't do. They've got to get the shots to drop to stay in the game to help make up for the number of turnovers that they have. Story, back out to Moore. Nine to shoot. And Indiana has had some trouble now getting good shots off. On the drive is Moore. He threw it up, couldn't get a call. Pritchard hustles, possession arrow favors Indiana. And Pritchard, sir, not playing like he has a couple of fouls. He's been very aggressive. It's been a scrappy game here from the get-go, and the Hoosiers have been able to hang in there down four. Smart basketball here by Austin Day. Look how he keeps sprinting down the floor. 
and his teammate gets in the ball for the layup. And of course, you thank your teammate for making that pass to you. That's cool. how you get the next pass. See how that works? <laughs> it's a smart player right there. I'm sure his dad talked to him about that. You don't tell that guy next pass? No. He says, hey, well, that's the last one you're getting there, buddy. But Austin did a nice job. There's the turnovers, eight and three, but Indiana's shooting three of 14. They are not making any shots. It's the free throw, seven out of nine, that's kept them in the game. Indiana's missed their last 10 shots, going over so seven minutes without a field goal. Now, and that's Tom Crean knew it'd be tough against this defense to score. That's why I wanted to try to get some layups. The league story inside the arc had it blocked again by Dave. They are so long and athletic. Talking about the Zags. Two blocks for Dave. Now look at that move. Pargo with a reverse. Now that's the Jeremy Pargo that the nation's used to. A 6'6", six, 6'2", six, uh, six, senior. 10 points a game. He entered the NBA draft last year, then pulled his name out. So he felt he might have been good enough last year to go to the NBA. Gonzaga's glad he's back for his senior year. And the Zips have their, or I should say the Zags have their biggest lead at 19 to 13 and the ninth Indiana turnover. Well, Indiana's got to get a shot every.